Hello and welcome to Acrojet on the Commodore 64 and this was released by Microprose in 1985 although I think it was released in the UK in 86 and it's a, another flight simulator but this time it's not a combat flight simulator this time you fly the BD-5J Acrojet plane and this is normally used at sports events, uh, sports aviation events and uh, although I think it was used in the James Bond film Octopussy at the start, uh, James Bond made his escape uh, flying in acro jets, and it's because it's so manoeuvrable, um, it's, it's ideal for these sort of things. So it's something a bit different. Uh, I never had this back in the day, I'm quite a new player to it. Uh, I picked up the cassette version second hand not too long ago and you, to be fair you, you really need to have the manual to play this because there's 10 events and the manual goes into some detail how, how to execute each event and it's pretty good it's going to be pretty hard without the manual and it's just loading up the game here I'll speed up a bit right so it's the usual Micropros uh, guys there Right, so there's 10 events, you can see they're listed there from pylon race all, all the way down to um, simulated flame out. Uh, we'll just do a single event. So th these screens are fairly basic looking. Let's just use the standard C64 pet ski fonts. Um, Right, um, t -t 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 -t. yeah, we'll start with single events. Yeah, you can see the events are listed here. Um, the, the number on the right hand side is, indicates the difficulty of the, of the events, so we'll start with pylon race because it's obviously the easiest. You can choose how difficult you want to make it, whether you want wind conditions or the jet performance. We'll stick with the defaults. It's a bit slow, um, but uh, we'll stick with them anyway. I'm not the I'm a fairly new player, so I'm certainly not an expert. So, so really, you can have multiple players. I mean, this is probably most fun if you've got more than one player and you're doing the pentathlon or decathlon events, and then it tallies up the scores. Um, a bit like uh, the sort of Epix uh, games series, except it's for flight sims. So there's a bit of a Bit of a, a code here. Um, if you don't put the code in, uh, the game starts to go a bit weird. Um, I say that there are some crack versions, um, but uh, I'm not convinced they all work properly. In fact, the version I'm using uh, is a crack version, but I don't think it works properly. Right, so here we are, pylon race, and. The game takes place in a 3D world, but uh, it's not first person. It yeah, actually it's shown from behind the plane, um, third person, which um, I think it's, uh, I'm not quite sure whether it's a technical reason um, or gameplay reason because you can actually see the plane properly and it does help. Um, but technical reasons are, I suppose, it doesn't have to bank the horizon when you when you bank the plane; it doesn't have to tilt it. Uh, so that might be a technical reason, it might speed things up, I'm not sure, I'm not, I'm not a technical guru on these sort of things. But the controls are fairly simple. Um, it's F for flaps, so uh, you take off, it does advise having um, high flaps when you take off. And also, uh, number keys 1 to 9, I think, for speed. So let's get started. So I've crossed the start finish line. Take off. Press L to take up the gear. Now we have to start at the bottom right of the play area. And you can see at the bottom right of the display there's a little map that shows where the plane is and uh, where the, the um, all the obstacles or uh, reference points are. So the idea of this is just, we just need to fly around each pylon. The screen will flash 
Here we go, when we pass the pylon. We just have to do a complete circuit. Controls are pretty twitchy, but uh, obviously it's an aqua jet, it's going to be twitchy. And this is not even flying at the, the hardest difficulty level. So it's supposed to be a race, but I'm not going full out on the speed. Because if you look at the top left of the state's panel where it says engine, there's an engine temperature gauge, and if I speed up things up now, you can see that value's gone up. Now when it goes above 700 degrees, that's uh, the engine will cut out um, eventually, so it's best not to tax it too much. You see it start to climb, so I'm slowing again. So it's just a, a case of keeping an eye on that, keeping an eye on the throttle. You see the graphics are very, very simple, but uh, they're, they're fast. Uh, they're a bit flickery, but uh, they're pretty fast uh, and they do the job well enough. So it's time to land, so we'll slow down a bit. Oh, I forgot to take the flaps up, never mind eh? I did say I wasn't an expert at this. Press space for the to slows down, that's the airspeed brake. Uh, I think I'll need to make another pass at that. That was terrible. And because it's a quite a small aircraft, it's got quite a small fuel tank. So you can't really can't really um, fly forever. So let's look at the map here. Yeah, so some of the lower gauges, um, uh, you can see the, it's the usual airspeeds. Uh, but at the, uh, oops, no, maybe it's not the best time to talk about that. So I've overshot again, but uh, let's slow down a bit. Wheels down. Yeah, landing's pretty hard. Going way too fast. Yeah, okay, there we go. I was going way too fast for that. Uh, so it gives you a score. We're not having a go, we'll try a different event. So, is it R, control R, I think we start. So let's try, oops. Let's try the ribbon cut. And um, yeah, we'll stick with that, I think. And you can see the map at the bottom right changes to indicate the different obstacles. Um, yeah, let's talk about this display then, just in a bit more detail. I mean, it's fairly rudimentary display. So uh, at the top left uh, of the states panel, we've got the engine. Um, we can press F1 to toggle that with the weather, but we've got the wind turned off, so it's not really that important. Um, and to the right of that is the alt altimeter, or altimeter, depending on uh, who you are. Um, and to the right of that is the artificial horizon. Then underneath uh, we have the vertical uh, velocity indicator, basically just tells us for gaining or losing altitude. Very useful, keep an eye on that one at all times. And next to that is the airspeed indicator, which is mostly useful when you're landing, I think, just to gauge the right speed. 
but uh, obviously they've all got their function. And uh, to the top right there's a flap indicator, the compass, um, that's airstrip direction indicator, okay that's interesting. And underneath that is the, the map display. And the bottom left is just the landing gear up and down, and the uh, landing gear brake on and off. And that's it, that's the controls. So let's start again. In fact, before we start, no, no let's, let's start. So I'm not the world's best at, at landing, so you can actually play all the events, or any event, without landing. Put the flaps down. All you have to do is cross the start finish line. Um, that's maybe worth playing if you're not the best. Like me, so I can take the flaps up now. So this time we're going to try and cut the ribbons that are on the... to the west of the uh, airstrip. So I'm just flying east so I can turn around and get a good run. Again, you, you get more points for how quickly you do it. So you can see the... they look like sort of goalposts. You have to cut. You can cut the ribbon in any order, any direction. Uh, the graphics are a bit flickery, but uh, I, I guess they're just trying to keep the speed up and not, not, don't worry about the, the um, when it actually redraws the graphics. A bit something to delete, I guess. Right, so we've cut that ribbon. Yes, so there's, there's another event where it's inverted and you've got to fly upside down, and that's really quite difficult. Uh, it sounds like it should be that much difficult, but believe me, it's, it's, it's pretty tricky to get your bearings when you're flying upside down. So we'll just keep flying on a bit, and then we'll try and attempt to land. With you. Slow down. So I think it's, it's around about 80. So it should be your airspeed. Ah, oh, I'm rubbish at <laughs> landing it. I'll try an, an event. Uh, I'll show you how to turn off the the uh, landing. Let's try. I mean, I've certainly not played all these. Um, yeah, we'll stick with the ribbon cut, I think. Yeah, so if you, if you go into these options, then if you turn airborne grounded off, if you t press that to turn, press left to right, turn, make that an A, you start airborne. Let's try that again then. Actually, it's a lot easier. But you get less points for doing it. If you, I mean, not really important if you're playing solo play, I suppose, uh, unless you keep track of school yourself. But uh, so that's that ribbon cut. Yeah, so when I first uh, played this, uh, I, th I thought, well, that's not going to be particularly interesting because there's no. Uh, there's no combat. It's uh, actually uh, actually I found it surprisingly enjoyable to play. I'm gonna put my flaps up, I think. And when I loaded it up, I found myself playing it for quite some time. I found it strangely relaxing. I managed to completely miss that one. Yeah, so... Let's get the review on the way, I suppose. 
So graphically, uh, it's, it's pretty simple, but uh, I think the graphics certainly good enough to display what it has to display, so it's certainly functional, but uh, maybe that's damning with faint praise, but because uh, I think it's pretty pretty decent for what it has to do. Uh, I like the status panel, it's well drawn, very easy to look at. The sound is a bit simplistic, it's just a very basic white noise for the engine sound and some, some beeps when you do things uh, and a basic explosion sound effect if you crash like, like I did. So we shouldn't have to land, as long as we fly over the start finish line I think the event should end. There we go. So that's the easy way to play it if you don't want to try landing. Uh, it is possible to land, uh, I've done it many times, but uh, just haven't unable to perform on the day. So uh, yeah, that's Acrojet for you. It's yeah, it's something different. Um, by all means, try and get hold of the manual and give it a go if you've got an interest in it. It's, uh, I'll give it um, 8 out of 10, because I really quite enjoy playing it. So uh, even though I'm still trying to learn it. It's it's a really good fun simulator, but it's pretty lightweight in some ways, but uh I think I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um yeah, eight out of ten for Aquajet, see you in the next video.